In this video, we're going to go over the different types of questions in the MCAT card section. The first thing we should discuss is why are question types important? And we're gonna walk through this step by step with the bullet points on the slide. So first, you should recognize that the MCAT is a standardized exam. And as a standardized exam, it's designed to provide a reliable score across multiple administrations of the exam. This means that if you have a student who takes the exam in one state in February, and let's say they, they get a 128. If you have another student who takes the MCAT in a different state and in a different month, like July, if that student also gets a 128, then you should be able to say that the two students have comparable critical analysis and reasoning skills. Essentially, it provides a standard that you can use to compare all students applying to medical school. Now, in order for the MCAT to provide a reliable score across multiple administrations of the exam, that means the exam has to have a degree of consistency. And in order for the MCAT to do this, they have to provide their question writers with a strict set of guidelines for writing passages and questions. And this is because the MCAT card section isn't like the science sections of the exam. It doesn't test any knowledge of content. Instead, it is testing students' skills, their critical analysis and reasoning skills. And the way that this is tested in questions is when a student reads a question, there are a certain number of steps that they have to be able to follow in order to get the answer correct. And in order to make these questions reproducible, the questions writers have to follow these guidelines. Now, when you have these guidelines, it means that there are almost templates for these questions. So that means the same types of question stems will show up over and over again. And the same types of correct answers and trap answers will show up over and over again. This is the true value of being able to understand question types. If you recognize that the question types are essentially the templates for each question on the exam, then you can start to learn how you should approach each type of question. So when you get to a reasoning within the text question, what are the steps you should take to answer that question? And how is that different if you're dealing with a foundations of comprehension question or a reasoning beyond the text question? And this is especially helpful for a lot of students who just don't get cars. They just think, I'm just bad at cars. But you don't have to be. If you're careful and you take your time to thoroughly review the CARS questions that you complete, you're gonna to start to notice these patterns and trends. And eventually you'll be able to develop a more formulaic approach to the MCAT CARS section. So that way the section doesn't seem so subjective and can be more formulaic. Okay, so now let's talk about the question types. Here you can see there are three types of questions on the MCAT CARS section. Foundations of comprehension questions represent 30% of the questions. Reasoning within the text questions represent another 30%. And reasoning beyond the text questions represent 40%. Within each of these, you can see that there are two types of foundations of comprehension questions. Ones that involve understanding the basic components of the text and others that are involving your ability to infer meaning from rhetorical devices or choice in text structure. There's only one type of reasoning within the text. That's integrating different components of the text to increase comprehension. Reasoning beyond the text, we also have two types. Applying or extrapolating ideas from the passage to new contexts and assessing the impact of introducing new factors, information, or conditions to ideas from the passage. If you read these definitions alone, they don't mean much. It's actually much more clear if we take a look at examples. So here we have a number of different sort of template question stems you would see for foundations of comprehension questions on the exam. So examples would include, the, pas the passage suggests that X was Y because. Now obviously uh, X and Y are gonna be specific topics that are described in the passage, but you can understand here that when you have a question like, the passage suggests that X was Y because, it's not asking you to do any complex analysis here. It's really just asking, what is the text saying about X and Y? Similarly, if you have a question like, 
what does the author or passage imply about X? Again, no complex analysis. It's just, what is the passage saying about X? And the same is true for the author's use of the term X most likely refers to. The purpose of X is, which of the following best describes X? All of these questions are similar in that they're simply just asking you, what is the text saying? It's not asking you to do any complex analysis. So next, reasoning within the text. So here, it gets a little bit trickier. So an example would be, X was most likely implying that, All right? So here, it's not completely obvious from the text. Here, you have to do some more reasoning here based on the text. So you have to think about not just what the text is saying, but what is it implying? So other examples include the author mentions or quotes X in order to. So here, it's even understanding a bit about how the author is writing. So here, it might be referencing a particular quote. Why did the author introduce this quote? What was the purpose of introducing this quote? Was it to provide evidence for a particular claim made in the passage? Something along those lines. And that's the same with why does the author mention X? In both of these, it's asking why did the author discuss X? Right? Not just simply, what is X, but why did the author talk about X? And another here, with which of the following statements would the author most likely agree? So here, you have to have a good understanding of the author's point of view. So again, it's not like you're just asking, what is the passage saying? What did the author say about X? It's really being able to take it one step further in the analysis of which of the following statements would the author most likely agree? And finally, we have reasoning beyond the text. And these are often characterized by either asking you to extrapolate passage information to a new context or introducing new information and asking how it impacts the claims and information in the passage. So here as an example, the information in the passage most strongly supports which of the following general statements. So as I said, applying passage information to a new context. We also have which of the following is the most reasonable inference that can be drawn from the information presented in the passage. Similarly, it's asking you take the passage information and apply it to a new context. And finally, we have if X were true, confirmed, or established, this would strengthen or weaken what assertions in the passage. This is such a common question stem on the MCAT car section. You see this all the time. So it's always the first half is, if something were true, if some new information was found, if something was established, all right, introducing some kind of new information and asking you to consider, how would that impact the passage? And the impact is often asking, would it strengthen a particular claim or would it weaken a particular claim? Okay. So these are the different types of questions in the MCAT car section. And as I mentioned, they're good for you to recognize. So that way, as you're reviewing the questions, you can start to identify what are those types of questions that you're missing over and over again. And as you analyze the question stems and answer choices, can you develop an effective approach to tackle each type of question?